Do you want more? More time, more balance, more love, more sex, more money, more real, and less bullshit? This is the Women Wanting More podcast with Dr. Karen Osborne. Real life, real stories, plus real tips to get you more of what you want. talk about getting back to the light get back to the light so as soon as I say that ever seen the poltergeist if you haven't oh my god you're maybe very young but you don't know the movie but go anyways there's a scene in poltergeist where there's like a psychic or a medium they've realized that there's like a poltergeist there's ghost spirits in the house I won't spoiler alert the rest of the movie but there's this Scene because their little girl Carol Ann is lost in this other dimension, this other world with these spirits. And so, this little very, very short, probably like four foot ten medium says, Get into the light, Carol Ann, get into the light, or step into the light, or something like that. Anyways, big tangents. Let's talk about this getting back into the light. Getting back to the light. First of all, you're allowed to have an off day, you're allowed to have an off week, actually. You're allowed to give yourself grace. You're allowed to forgive yourself. You're allowed to acknowledge that you're doing your best. And some some days your best is not, you you know, you've been, let's just put it this way. I don't want to say this with judgment. You've been a better best. Does that make any sense? You um, are perhaps judging yourself for the way that you are showing up right now, maybe you're showing up yesterday or in previous weeks or previous years, and uh, you're not realizing that that actually was your best on that day. And I know this, yesterday I had a shitty fucking day. It was hard. My dad passed about three weeks ago, and uh, there's a lot of other things that I've been dealing with for a long, long time, and it's like, it just just hit a breaking point and you know it's it's been been still working through all the stuff processing all the stuff getting support when I can when I need it taking care of myself like there's been a lot of gifts within this whole experience but today I wasn't feeling the gifts and um, all of the tools that I use to stay into the light to stay in the light choose differently when fear and ego shows up and rears her ugly heads that, uh, you know, none of them were really sticking, if you will. And um, it was tough. And I just kind of, you know what, I just basically surrendered to the moments and let myself just cry and release and be angry and all the things that we're coming to the surface that needed to be expressed. You know, I explain it this way sometimes to my clients. I know this is a really kind of like gross, this is an algae was given to me before. And I was like, Oh, that actually makes a lot of sense. But you know, when you pop is it. Okay. It's like, you know, that, that it has to be expressed. You have to get it out for in order for it to kind of like heal. Right. And so it's the same thing with our emotions. So there's going to be times that you're going to want to just skip past that because like being in that place, being in the dark places, it does not feel good. It feels like, it feels like shit. It feels like the heaviest stuff. It feels like uh, awful. It feels like a place you don't want to be. It feels, it feels as if you will want to run from that place and not face it. And the challenge with that is that although that might be a strategy that's helpful at times, and maybe that's necessary at times, that maybe it's not appropriate, you can't let go of, you can't release the rage inside of you or the, you know, the the fear or the sadness or the pain or any of that kind of stuff, and you just kind of got to bottle it for a short period of time, I'm telling you, this is not a long-term strategy that works or is healthy in any sort of way to somehow deny and squash the stuff you're experiencing and to whitewash it with your spiritual bypassing. With so much love and compassion, because I've been there too, do not do that, sister. It is not serving you. Short-term strategy, need to. You got to keep it together for whatever reason. You're at work, you're at a family thing, you know, you're with your kids. Yes, I completely acknowledge, understand, and honor that, but not long-term strategy. You 
need to feel these things. And the only way really to get back into the light, like to fully back into the light, which is joy and happiness and gratitude, and even amidst this, right? I talk to my mom twice a day. We actually live in different parts of Canada, very, very far away from her, and uh, geographically at least, because I've stayed in touch with her energetically, spiritually. I think just as much as if I was in front of her. And, um, you know, we've talked about this, like having, letting herself have moments where she feels um, joy, where she feels happiness, or she laughs. It's okay to have that within the grief. You know, you can still be going through some really tough things in, li- in life, and yet have moments where you're back into the light. And if you're not fully back in yet, that's okay. Don't judge that either. Don't judge it either. Know that all of these pieces are serving you in some way, even though you can't see it yet. You simply just, you know, can choose to let go of the control, let go of the trying to steer the ship, just let go and allow yourself to be where you are. However, there's a caveat to this, okay? Which I found myself going there yesterday where it was just like, like a spin cycle. Like just being stuck in it. You know, I recognize when I get into those places at times, the recovery out is far faster. Yesterday was a tough day. It was a very tough day. I see that with my clients. I know when they get into spins, it's just repeating the same stuff, like just spinning. And they know they're in a spin. No, let me take that back. They don't always know that they're in a spin. Sometimes it's just a loving kind of nudge to move them back towards where they want to be. Sometimes it literally is a, we'll be speaking or messaging and I just go, stop. Capital letters, messaging, stop. Take a breath. Is this what you want right now? Our life is filled with choices every single moment of the day. Some are choices that really don't matter. Should I eat this or that for, for lunch? Do I like this shirt or this one when I'm out shopping, pick, shopping, picking out new clothes, right? Like some shit that's just like whatever, it's trivial. But what are the dominant choices that you are making? Like the important ones, right? And to know that you have the capability as a human being, as a powerful woman, to choose again every single time. Choose again, choose again, choose again. Don't like where you are? Choose again. You are not happy where you are in this moment, choose again. You feel like you didn't say the thing that you wanted to say or shut up where you want to, okay, cool. Clean it up if you need to and then just simply choose again. The feelings of guilt and feeling badly and like all that kind of stuff need not be. And I understand this is not so easy, right? It's, it's not exactly the easiest thing to just say, well, just don't feel that, right? If this has been a pattern and a program that you've been running for a long, long time, it's, a, it's hard to get off that train, right? It's hard to get off of it. And the first step out of that and back into the light is to be present. It's always that. Like the solution to whatever's happened in your life right now, it isn't coming from you trying to figure things out in your head. It doesn't. I'm not saying that you shouldn't think about things, that you shouldn't use your beautiful, powerful, intelligent brain. I'm not saying that you shouldn't use logic, but like we place way too much emphasis on that and very little on our heart, very little on our intuition, very little on what our soul's trying to tell us. Very little what other people on different dimensions, spirits, guides, God, source, love, whatever you want to call it, Mother Earth, universe, are trying to deliver us. We brush those off. But somehow we are more intelligent than the all-being force that connects everything on this planet. Like, seriously. (laughs) How conceited are we to think that? Really, right? I say that just joking. I don't mean it really. Like, don't. This is not about judging ourselves. No, let's, let's not do that to each other, right? Like, no, no, no. Or to ourselves, pardon me. Let's not do that to ourselves. But it's silly if you think about it, right? It's silly if you think about it. Like, there's so much wisdom that's happening in this universe that's guiding everything. Why not tap into this? Why do we think we have to carry the whole goddamn load when we don't? When we don't. 
So feel what you're feeling, acknowledge it, allow it to move through, and then move back into the light. Go back to your tools that help you to get there. And I mentioned some of the last podcast episode, you know, there can be some things that you have in your back pocket that help you get there. And then you go back into the light. Because I'm telling you, the more that you spend time in darkness on a regular basis, right? So, you know, again, for example, my dad just passed three weeks ago. It was like, oh, like, I'm okay, I'm okay, to, oh, here's grief, hit me like a brick wall, to, you know, allowing myself some space for four or five days, to, oh, I'm okay, I'm okay, to, oh, grief just kind of tends to come up and it sneaks up on you now. Okay, cool. I got you. I see you, grief, right? I got to feel it with all the other grief that's happening in my life right now too. Like allow myself to feel all of it, but yet don't be consumed by it. Does that make sense? Like don't then be sucked into the vortex of this is now your life. It's not, it's a moment in time. It's a day of your life. It's a week of your life. In the grand scheme of things, this is a little snip in time. But yet when we can't see the forest for the trees, when we're just in the thick of everything, it seems like it's everything, right? You know, my son Tyson this morning loves playing uh, video games. He loves Minecraft. Loves, loves, loves. And I'm okay with some of it. I like the creative part and they're building things and they're, you know, it's cool. There's some parts I think that are really amazing. So we have an iPad and, and you know, I think it has automatic updates must be on it because suddenly start updating. Tyson's like, oh my God, why, why? Like it's taking up some time. He has to have a little bit of iPad time before we get off to school for the day. He finishes reading, then he gets his iPad time, and then, then he's like, oh, why? Like, you know, it doesn't matter what I say in that moment. He is just consumed with his stuff at that time, right? And we can say, oh, that's kids, like one little thing, and they blow it up, and and we could go, oh, relax, buddy. And But that's where he is in that moment, right? But the thing is, is we do that as adults. That just looks different. We might not, for actually, we might freak out. We might freak out over technology. We might freak out over one conversation. We might freak out over the story we think that person said when they said the thing or they looked at us or they emailed us back, ba, 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 ba. And we get stuck into that spin cycle again and again and again and again. And the more that we stay there, the more the universe goes, oh, this is what you want. Okay. You got it. So if you're dominantly, if you're mostly in that place of darkness, darkness, it is simply a time, if you choose it, because life is about choices, to choose to step back into the light. So here's your more tip for today. Just, I want you to journal right now. Where have you been? Your thoughts, your emotions, your actions, your words all of it, your way of being over the last 30 days. Don't feel you have to take a look at a calendar, but just kind of just sit there and just think about that for a moment. Have you been showing it? And then I want you to answer some of these questions. Have you been showing up the way that you want to be showing up? And by the way, answer these questions. And I want you to do your very, very best to refrain from judgment, shaming yourself, blaming yourself, feeling guilty or badly in any way. Like almost just see it as the observer. Just be like, oh, actually I haven't no, nope, I've actually been a little short with the kids or my husband, boyfriend, partner. Like, no, I've been a little bit that way. I, um, yeah, I've been actually really good with work cuts and stuff. Okay, that's been really good. Um, work, nah, I've kind of haven't been, you know, fully in. So, you know, just to be observant of how have you been showing up in the different areas of your life? How have you been showing up in those areas? And when you reflect on that again, without judgment towards yourself, without then having this be the thing that spins you into a cycle, like don't, 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 don't. So without all those pieces, I want you just to, to, just to reflect on that and say, am I okay with that? You may take a look and go, no, it's everything the way I'm showing up. I actually feel really good. And it can be a way you kind of celebrate that, right? Like maybe you didn't take the time to do that. You might take a look and you have maybe, I don't know, different areas of your life. Half of them, you're like, no, not these ones. So am I going to, you know, how can I choose differently? If I want this to change, if I want to get back into the light, what, what is needed for me to do that? And listen, this is not for you to make also, it's also not for you to make a big laundry list of all your things you need to do and that you're not doing right right now. It's not. It could just be something simple like, you know what, when I'm feeling angry and stuff, I'm just going to remember to breathe right? I'm going to give myself some more rest. 
The doing, by the way, can be seen like it's something passive, but it's incredibly active. We place so much emphasis on the doing all the time. It's not always about the doing. It's really not. Like, the doing can be in the resting. Anybody knows this who, you know, is interested in their health and fitness in their body that so much of muscle that's built, the the fitness that's built, the stamina, all that stuff happens in the rest. It happens in the repair time. It happens in the restorative periods where you're not lifting weights, where you're not going to the run, where you're not you know, cranking out a spin class or yoga class or like it happens in the rest. Think of when you plug in your devices at night. That's when the power comes up, when it rests, when you're not using it. It allows itself to be powered up. So understand that as some of the things that you could be choosing to do if you reflect back and you go, no, there's some things that I actually, I, I don't want to be showing up this way that don't have to be this like massive to do. It could be a to not do it could be something about boundaries. It could be of, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to really focus on giving myself more love and compassion because I've been so hard on myself. I'm going to take five extra minutes each day to breathe or to meditate. You know, I'm going to take a tub like once a week. Take a salt bath tub, like just relax. Like, so understand, these could be very, very simple things. I don't want you to spin this into, again, all these things that you now have to do to make sure more stressed. And no, just reflect on how you've been showing up in your life and journal this all because you need to see it. And then just ask yourself this question. Is this the way you want to be showing up? And if not, what are the things that you can now be doing or not doing, which allow you to choose differently if that's what you truly desire? Hmm. So you can get back into the light because the light is where we do belong. There is light and dark. It's a part of it. It's not our place to judge it. There's a lot of things that we find in this place. We need to have the contrast. Otherwise we would never know it, right? We would never know if you, you know, you would never know true happiness and joy and bliss. If you didn't have moments of sad and pain and upset and hurt, like, it's needed. Do you get that? You don't know the color black if you don't have white as the contrast. Like, this is the part of life that is there. But we don't have to stay there. That's the difference. We can choose to, to move back into the light as we get better at it, as we heal more of these things, and stay where we rightfully belong most of the time, which is in the light which is in the light. These are, you know, the types of conversations I have with clients one-on-one where we go really deep into this, right? Where we really go through the tools. We take a look at the subconscious programming that the woman is stuck on, right? We take a look at really building up her feelings of worthiness, all based on your goals, your outcomes, what you want to see happen. And so right now, actually, too, I am starting a brand new just 30 day. I shouldn't say just 30 days. We still do a lot of amazing work. 30 day one on one coaching program. And, you know, this came to me earlier in the week and I just kind of sat on this for a little bit of time. And I was like, no, this actually feels really good. This is a way that I can actually coach more women. There's 10 spots available for this new 30 day one on one coaching program. It is a shorter period of time. It's a more affordable investment for a lot of women that could step into very, very easily. And there's a lot of work that can be done in those 30 days. So if you would like to apply, because one-on-one coaching is by application only, for one of these 10, 10, and I'm messaging a lot of women today that have applied in the past to let them know about this. They're kind of kind of get some of the first dibs and you here on the podcast. So if you'd like to apply for one of these one-on-one new one-on-one coaching spots, here's what you need to do. Email me, drkarenosburn at gmail.com. So that's D-R-K-A-R-E-N-O-S-B-U-R-N at gmail.com or drkaren at drkarenosburn.com. Both will get to me and simply say, Karen, I would love to apply and I will connect with you from there. So I will talk to you in the next episode, sister. A life of more really is one step away from you choosing to get back to the light every single day. I love and appreciate you. To get the show notes of each Women Wanting More episode, including the how to get more tip, subscribe to the newsletter at drkarenosburn.com newsletter.